let's discuss phase diagnosis, the basic concepts. Whether a person is healthy or not can be ascertained by observing the face and sensory organs. In TCM, the human face is considered the external representations of the viscera, chi, and blood. It is also where the meridians gather and therefore the prosperity and decline of the zhang and fu organs and the disturbance of vital chi and blood by evil chi will be reflected in the face. For example, a healthy person's face glows, looking attractive and moist, meaning that person has sufficient nourishing chi and blood. If a person's face looks dull and, or bloodless, it may suggest problems with the person's internal organs. Therefore, face reading plays a crucial role in diagnostic inspection in traditional Chinese medicine. By observing the face, a doctor can perceive the changes happening within the viscera, chi and blood, muscles, joints and bones, meridians and the vital chi, thereby understanding the prosperity and decline of the vital chi and the depth of penetration of evil chi, thus predicting the course of pathological changes. Now let's go to the basic concepts. Face reading is one aspect of the diagnostic inspection of traditional Chinese medicine, a method through which a PCM doctor observes on the patient's face the reflex tones pertaining to the viscera, viscera organs and learns about the health condition of the person's viscera. With an overview of the face and the sensory organs in mind, the doctor learns the functional states of the body's viscera, the meridians, and the chi and blood, thereby arriving at a conclusion about the general and localized pathological changes of the person's body. Put simply, one can look at the sensory organs of, on the face and inspect the state of chi and blood and the diseases of, of Zhang and Fu organs can be determined. Specifically, the diagnostic phase reading relies on the inspection of several things. First, the color and brightness of the face. By observing the color and brightness of facial skin, a doctor determines the prosperity and decline of chi and blood and the progression of a pathological development thereby predicting a person's health conditions. For example, the skin color of a Chinese person is yellow, and when the facial skin looks rosy with radiance, it is a healthy complexion. When it looks otherwise, it may indicate a health problem. Now let's go to the shape and bearing of a person. There is much to be read in a person's physical shape and bearing. People who are overweight but actually eat very little are most likely to experience a spleen deficiency and phlegm retention, while those who are skinny but eat a lot often have excess stomach fire. A person's bearing is a manifestation of the person's general state of health. People who are quiet and do not like to move much often experience cold syndromes. People who are easily irritated and like to move a lot are most likely to have heat syndromes. The general spirit. A person's spirit is the comprehensive manifestation of the person's vitality. Decisions are generally made through observing one's spirit, the look in one's eyes, the facial expression, the language ability, and their responsiveness. If a person has acute awareness, speaks clearly and is quick to respond, and the eyes look clear and bright, these are manifestations that a person is healthy. Conversely, if a person is often incoherent and has a dull look in the eyes, an apathetic facial expression and slow responses, and also exhibits a general lassitude, it means that this person is in a state of sickness and may even be seriously ill. The five sensory organs are on the face. Inspecting the five sensory organs is an important aspect of face reading diagnosis. TCM teaches that the five viscera organs open to the five sensory organs, and therefore, one can learn the health conditions of the viscera through observing the five sensory organs on the face. The eyes are the orifices of the liver, and therefore, diseases associated with the liver are often reflected in the eyes. For example, if the eyes are red and swollen, it is usually a result of liver fire or wind heat. 
The kidneys open into the ears and therefore problems associated with the kidneys often manifest themselves in the ears. For example, if the pinna of the ear looks scorched black and withered, it is usually a sign of insufficient kidney essence. The lung opens into the nose. If a pathogen develops in the lungs, the nose will perform abnormally. For example, a twitching nose signifies pathogenic heat congesting the lung. Now let's move on to tongue signs. Diagnosis through the tongue signs is a unique diagnostic procedure based on the experiences accumulated by TCM practices over time. It is conducted by looking at the texture of the tongue, that is the muscular part of the tongue, and the tongue coating, that is the moss-like covering of the tongue surface. Tongue texture can reveal the state of deficiency and excess of the viscera, while the tongue coating can reveal the depth of external invas evil invasion of the body. A healthy person has a tongue that is pale red in color with a thin layer of white coating. Abnormalities of the tongue can be determined through its color and coating. For example, when the tongue is red, it signifies heat. And when pale, white, it indicates deficiency and cold. A purple tongue suggests blood stasis, and a yellow one implies inferior and heat syndromes. When the tongue is white, it denotes superficies and cold syndromes. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss interviewing dry eyes. The most common causes of dry eyes are severe liver blood deficiency or liver yin deficiency. In the, er in the elderly, dry eyes are often due to liver and kidney yin deficiency. In some cases, lung yin deficiency is also involved. Dry eyes with acute onset may be due to invasion of wind heat, in which case they would also be red. Dry eyes. Summary, liver yin deficiency, there is blood vision. Liver and kidney yin deficiency, there is dizziness and tinnitus. For lung yin deficiency, uh, there is dry cough. For external wind heat, there is aversion to cold and there is fever. Liver yin deficiency, dry eyes, blurred vision, bloaters, dizziness, numbness, or tingling of the limbs, scanty menstruation, dull pale complexion but with red cheekbones, withered and brittle nails, dry skin and hair, night sweating, normal colored tongue without coating, fine or floating empty pulse. For the acupuncture points, we use liver 8, stomach 36, spleen 6, REN4, kidney 6, liver 4. Kidney yin deficiency, there is dry eyes, blurred vision, bloaters, dizziness, tinnitus, hardness of hearing, poor memory, night sweating, vertigo, dry mouth and throat at night, low, lower back ache, constipation, dark scanty urine, tiredness, lassitude, normal colored tongue without coating, floating, empty paws. For the acupuncture points, we use kidney 3, REN4, bladder 23, spleen 6, REN12, kidney 6. Liver fire. Dry and red eyes with burning sensation, bloodshot eyes, painful eyes, headache, red face, dizziness, tinnitus, irritability, propensity to outburst of anger, thirst, bitter taste, constipation, dark urine, red tongue with redder sides and dry yellow coating with a wiry rapid pulse. For the acupuncture points, we use liver 2, LI11, LI4, spleen 6, kidney 6, yu yao. Heart yin deficiency, uh, there's dry eyes, palpitation, insomnia, dream disturbed sleep, poor memory, anxiety, propensity to be startled, mental restlessness, and easiness, feeling hot and bothered, dry mouth and throat, night sweating, normal colored tongue without coating or with rootless coating, floating empty pulse, especially on the left front position. Severe liver blood deficiency, there is dry eyes, blurred vision, bloaters, dizziness, numbness or tingling of limbs, scanty menstruation, dull pale complexion, pale and thin tongue with very pale or orangey sides, choppy or fine pulse. 
lung and kidney deficiency, there is dry eyes, blurred vision, floaters, dry cough that is worse in the evening, dry throat and mouth, thin body, breathlessness on exertion, lower back ache, night sweating, dizziness, tinnitus, hardness of hearing, scanty urination, normal colored tongue without coating, floating, empty pulse. Thank you for your attention. Let's go to the five-phase theory. The topic is five-phase correspondences. Five-phase theory establishes a system of correspondences that groups phenomena in the universe into five categories. These categories represent tendencies of movement and transformation in the universe and are associated with the natural phenomena of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Clear constant relationships between them are used to explain changes in nature. Each of the phases represents a category of related functions and qualities. Wood is associated with the season of spring, sprouting, early growth, awakening, mourning, childhood, and the penetrating powerful imp impetus of new life, anger, and wind. Fire is associated with summer. It represents a maximum state of activity, flourishing, exuberant growth, outward motion, high noon, and the expansive movement of happiness and open flame. Earth is associated with a long summer or the transition between seasons. It signals balance and equilib equilibrium, the early afternoon, nourishment, abundance, the quiet of pensiveness and worry and dampness. Metal is associated, associated with the autumn season, declining function, a movement toward crystallization and shedding that is not needed, thus clarity and sadness and dry weather. Water is associated with winter. It expresses a state of downward motion, accumulation, rest, nighttime, and the development of new potential, the concentration of willpower and fear, and the cold. Five-phase correspondences permeate all aspects of classical thought in China. The five-way categorization is applied to colors, sounds, odors, flavors, emotions, animals, the planets, and ultimately everything in the universe. Let's look at the five-phase correspondences, where Hun corresponds to a number of actions equivalent to unconscious activity, but is also related to deep sleep. Shen is the mental activity, the, subs the substrate of thought. Yi is the thought, the ability to generate ideas, and Po is a ve vegetative activity, automatism, etc. And Ji is the will, and perseverance. So let's look at um, wood. So the direction of wood is east. The season is spring. Its climate is wind. The planet Jupiter. Number is three plus five equals eight. Meat is chicken. Cereal, wheat. Sound is jiao. Musical note is C. Color, green. Taste is bitter. The smell is uremic. Organ, liver. The viscera is urinary bladder. Sense organ is eyes. The tissue is tendons. And the bodily sounds is hu or sai. Virtues is benevolent. The benevolence, emotion is anger, spiritual activity is hun, and bodily region is the neck and nape. For fire, its direction is the south. The season is summer, the climate is heat, planet is Mars, the number is 2 plus 5 equals 7, the meat is goat, cereal is millet, sound is zheng, musical note is d, color is red, taste acid, smell is burnt, organ is heart, the viscera is the small intestine. Its sense organ is the tongue. The tissue is the vessels. The bodily sounds is laugh. Virtuous is courtesy. Emotion is joy. And the spiritual activity is shen. And the bodily region is the thoracocostal. For earth, the direction is the center. The season is late summer. The climate is dampness. Planet is Saturn. The number is five. Meat is beef, cereal, sorghum, sound is gong, musical note, E, color is yellow, taste is sweet, smell is scented, organ is spleen, and the viscera is stomach. The sense organ is the mouth, the tissue is the muscles, the bodily sounds is singing. The virtues is fidelity, the emotion is worry, the spiritual activity is yi, and the bodily region is the spine. For metal, the direction is west. The season is fall. Climate is dryness. Planet is Venus. The number is 4 plus 5 equals 9. The meat is horse. Cereal is rice. 
Sound is Shang. Musical note is G. Color, white. The taste is pungent. Smell is cool. The organ for metal is long, and the viscera is a large intestine. The sense organ is nose, and the tissue is the skin. The bodily sound is crying, and the virtue is justice. Emotion is melancholy, and the spiritual activity is po. The bodily region is escapuladorsal. For water, the direction is north, season is winter, climate is cold, planet is mercury, number is 1 plus 5 equals 6, the meat is pork, the cereal is beans or soy, the sound is you, musical note is A, color is black, the taste is salt, the smell is putrid, and the organ is kidney, the viscera, the bladder. The sense organ is the ear and the tissue is the bones. The bodily sound is moaning and virtue is knowledge. Emotion is fear and the spiritual activity is zhi and the bodily region is the lumbar. Thank you so much for your attention. Diagnosis according to San Jiao theory, the damp heat in the lower jiao. The lower jiao. Qi he has penetrated the lower jiao. It will be the liver or kidneys that are affected and the imbalances will correspond to shui level heat in a diagnosis according to the four levels or the Shaoyin heat stage of diagnosis according to the six stages. There can also be a direct invasion of damp heat in the large intestine or urinary bladder. Damp heat in the lower jiao. It is usually the urinary bladder and large intestine that are affected in damp heat in the lower jowl. This will resemble damp heat in the middle jowl, but here there will be signs that the urinary bladder's functions are disrupted or that there is damp heat in the large intestines. Etiology, exposure to she damp heat. Symptoms and signs. Fever that is reduced by sweating but soon rises again. Fever that is worse in the afternoon and comes in waves. Heavy and aching muscles, especially in the limbs. Nausea, poor appetite, difficult urination, painful urination. Dark odorous urine, cloudy or oily urine. Burning pain in the urination, loose, sticky, odorous stools. Abdominal distension or bloating. Heavy and possibly pounding headache. Difficulty thinking clearly. Oily skin yellowish complexion, restlessness or irritability, red tongue with yellow sticky coating, and fast and slippery pulse. The key, key symptoms would be odorous diarrhea, painful urination, fever, yellowish, greasy tongue coating, rapid and slippery pulse. Treatment principles would be to drain damp heat from the lower jowl. Acupuncture points to choose from, LI11, stomach 25, stomach 24, spleen 9, spleen 6, REN 3, bladder 28, bladder 32, bladder 40, and bladder 53. Needle technique should be draining. The explanation is LI11, stomach 25, and 44 drain damp heat from the intestines. Spleen 6 and 9 drain damp heat. Bladder 28, 32, 40, and REN 30 drain damp heat from the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder 53 opens the water passages and dispenses stagnation in the urinary bladder. The person must avoid consuming foods that produce dampness or heat. Damp heat in the lower jaw can be caused by the following patterns of imbalance. No previous patterns. Upper jaw heat and middle jaw heat. Damp heat in the lower jaw can result in the following pattern imbalance. Heat in the liver or kidneys. Thank you for your attention. Zang viscera, spleen, physiological functions. The spleen is located in the middle jaw, underneath the diaphragm. It is one of the main organs in the digestive system. Its meridians connect it to the stomach in an interior-exterior relationship. The spleen belongs to the earth element. Transportation and transformation. This phrase means that the spleen has the functions of digesting food and drink, 
transforming them into the nutritive substances and absorbing and then distributing the essential nutrients to the entire body. In carrying out these processes, the spleen must work with the stomach and the small intestine, but the spleen is the lead organ in this system. There are two main aspects to the spleen's role. One, transporting and transforming the essential substances of drink and food. The activities of digesting food and absorbing the nutritive substances are carried out jointly by the several Zhang and Fu organs. Food and drink are taken into the stomach. Following the composition and fermentation by the spleen and the stomach, the sludge is transported into the small intestine. In the small intestine, the clear is separated from the turbid and the two are propelled down separate paths. The nutritive substances which are in the clear portion are absorbed and are conveyed by the spleen to the heart, the lung, and the rest of the body, providing nourishment to all the organs and tissues. The entire process is the transporting and transforming function of the spleen. Two, transporting and transforming water dampness. This refers to the important function of the spleen in absorbing, distributing, and excreting fluids. In the process of water metabolism and the delivery of fluids throughout the body, the lung, the spleen, kidney, liver, and other visceral organs are all closely involved. However, the spleen has the pivotal role, and this role has two principal aspects. First, the spleen takes the absorbed water, transforms it into body fluids, and delivers it to the lung. The lung and heart then distribute it throughout the body to carry out its tasks of nourishing and moistening. Second, after the various organs and tissues have extracted nutrients from the delivered fluids, the spleen delivers the waste fluids to the appropriate organs to be excreted from the body as sweat or urine. The transporting and transforming functions mainly depend upon the actions of spleen chi. If spleen chi is abundant, then the absorption, transformation, and transportation and delivery of nutrients all proceed normally. This results in a strong physical constitution, vigorous vitality, and enhanced resistance against diseases. Conversely, if spleen chi is deficient, its ability to transport and transform becomes compromised, resulting in a poor appetite, loss of taste, abdominal distension, diarrhea, and other symptoms. This may lead further to malnutrition manifested by emaciation, fatigue, and lassitude. So we have here the schema of what we have discussed earlier. After birth, food and drink are the principal source of nutrition required by the body. They are also the material basis for the generation of chi and blood. At the same time, digestion of food and drink, absorption of nutritive substances, and their distribution cannot take place without the spleen. For this reason, the spleen is said to be the foundation of postnatal acquisition and the source for the generation of chi and blood. It should be emphasized that the transforming and transporting functions of the spleen not only depend upon spleen chi, but are also intimately linked to spleen yang and spleen yin. Spleen yang has the capacity to warm the body, to digest food and drink, and facilitate production and conveyance of nutrients and body fluid. Deficiency of spleen yang can lead to failure of transformation and transportation, resulting in pain with coldness in the abdomen, mucoid feces, cold limbs, even edema, and other symptoms. Spleen in is the essential nutritive substance for nourishing the spleen and the stomach and for restraining spleen yang. Deficiency of spleen yin can lead to emaciation with pallid complexion, poor appetite, dry mouth, dry and red tongue, constipation, and other symptoms. The mutual relationship of restraint and support between spleen yin and spleen yang is a basic requirement for the maintenance of yin-yang equilibrium in the spleen and the stomach. Thank you for your attention. Let's now proceed to diagnosis according to Zanko organ patterns with a pattern heart chi stagnation. Heart chi stagnation can be a distinct pattern of imbalance, but it is most often seen as a consequence of and together with liver chi stagnation. The pattern arises almost exclusively from emotional causes. Its etiology can be traced to emotional imbalances where feelings are not expressed or where there is a prolonged presence of a particular emotion and this can lead to heart chi stagnation. For the symptoms and signs, uh, it will manifest with palpitations, tightness of the chest, 
chest oppression or the feeling that there is a tight band or rim around the chest, tension in and around the solar plexus, shortness of breath, a need to yawn or sigh, a sensation of there being a lump in the throat, poor appetite, disinclination to lie down, weak and cold hands, purple lips, insomnia, mental unrest, sadness, disinclination to speak. The person is particularly uncommunicative and seems very close and emotionally repressed. The voice can be sad or flat, mood swings, depression, slightly purple or swollen edges on the front third of the tongue, a wiry pulse on the left soon position in the pulse can be knotted. And the key symptoms here are palpitations, tightness of the chest, a need to sigh, the person gives the impression of being emotionally repressed. For the treatment principle, we spread heart chi and open the chest, and we activate the shen. For the acupuncture points, we can choose from heart 5, heart 7, pericardium 6, bladder 14, bladder 15, bladder 17, liver 14, ren 17, ren 14, do 11, and stomach 40. And we use the spreading needle technique. Heart 5, heart 7, pericardium 6, REN 14, do 11, bladder 14 and 15, spread heart chi and activate the shen. Liver 14, REN 17, and some of 40, disperse chi in the chest. Physical activities such as sport and exercise will help to circulate chi in the chest. Beating the chest with a loose fist or the upper back with a wooden spoon will help, will help to invigorate the chi in the chest. Rolling the shoulders and swinging the arms can also be recommended. Due to the emotional aspects that are often at the root of this imbalance, it is important that the person addresses the underlying emotional issues. Breathing exercises that involve slowly inhaling deeply, then quickly exhaling with force whilst making a loud noise will help to release stagnant chi. Heart chi stagnation can be caused by liver chi stagnation, heart chi deficiency, heart blood stagnation, heart blood deficiency, and food stagnation. And in turn, this can result to liver chi stagnation, heart blood stagnation, heart yin deficiency, heart blood deficiency, and phlegm. But to summarize, heart chi stagnation has its etiology in emotional stress, chronic illness, and blood loss. The underlying or accompanying pathology are stagnation of liver chi, heart chi deficiency, and heart yang deficiency. Signs and symptoms are palpitations, feeling of oppression in the chest, depression, plumps to the throat, slight shortness of breath, sighing, poor appetite, epigastric discomfort, dislike of lying down, weak and cold limbs, pale complexion, slight purple lips. The pulse is empty with overflowing quality on the left front position, and the tongue is pale and purplish, especially on the sides near the tip. The treatment principle is to boost heart chi and unbind the chest, clear phlegm and calm the shen, and descend lung chi. For the acupuncture treatment, we can use heart 5 to supplement heart chi, pericardium 6 to unbind the chest and regulate the chi, REN 17 to gather the uh, the gathering points for chi, stomach 40 clears heat phlegm and calm heart. Uh, stomach 40 clears heart phlegm and calms the shen. Heart 7 regulates and supplements the heart. REN 15 regulates heart and descends lung chi. Lung 7 descends lung chi. LI4 restores yang and we needle with even method. Thank you for listening. Let's discuss chi transformation, motive force dynamics. The process of chi transformation is a natural biological process. What the theory of chi transformation insists upon is that one chi, that one chi embodies both yin and yang. The myriad things in the universe are generate, generated through the opposition and mutual support of yin and yang. Thus the Motive force for chi transformation resides within chi itself. As the spiritual pivot states, the upper jaw is open and permits effusion. It assimilates the and diffuses the flavor of the five brains. 
It warms the skin, nourishes the body, and it keeps the hair moist, like the sprinkling from fog in dew. Such are the actions of chi. This quote shows that the chi itself possesses two entirely different tendencies and actions, ascending versus descending, and warming, evaporating versus moistening, nourishing. The Ming Dynasty physician Wang Kentang said, the one Qi contains within itself yin and yang, heat and cold, ascending and descending, and activity and quiescence. This clearly and indicates that yin and yang are both contained within Qi and that the interaction between yin Qi and yang Qi is the fundamental cause of Qi transformation. Dynamics of Qi transformation. The direction of movement of the various types of chi in various physiological activities is the key for preserving normal chi transformation. For certain physiological activities, chi needs to ascend, for others to descend. In ancient China, people often express these two movements in relation to heaven and earth. Heaven pertains to yang, and yang descends. Earth pertains to yin, and yin ascends. The plain question states the ascent descent of chi is manifested in the alternation between heaven chi and earth chi. Again, descent comes after ascending to the zenith, and the one that is descending pertains to heaven. Ascent comes after descending to the nadir, and one that is ascending pertains to earth. Heaven chi descends and flows on earth. Her chi ascends and soars in heaven. Hence, the high and the low call each other, and ascent and descent cause each other, in so doing, giving rise to all changes and transformations. Again, clear yang becomes heaven and turbid yin earth. Her chi ascends and becomes cloud, heaven chi descends and becomes rain. Rain comes from earth chi and cloud and cloud comes from heaven chi. Therefore, clear yang exits the upper orifices and turbid yin exits the lower orifices. Clear yang diffuses into the inner pieces of the body exterior and turbid yin flows into the sang visira. Clear yang invigorates the four extremities and turbid yin returns to the fu visira. This coat uses the ascent descent and mutual transformation of water and chi between heaven and earth as analogy of the metabolism and chi transformation in the human body. Whether chi ascend or descend or moves otherwise is determined by the functional characteristic of the Sangfu visira. The ascent descent of chi and its entering exiting is a unity of opposites. But each visceral organ has a special effect on the ascent or descent of chi. From the local point of view, it is not necessary that its physiological activity must have both ascent and descent or entering and exiting. Instead, each has its own pattern. For example, liver chi and spleen chi ascend, lung chi and stomach chi descend, heart yang descends, and kidney yin ascends. From the point of view of the totality of physiological activities of the body, however, there must be a dynamic equilibrium between ascent and descent and between entering and exiting. Only then can normal physiological functioning uh, be maintained. Thus, the ascending and descending, exiting and entering of chi are important factor in the regulation and balancing of many physiological capabilities. Thank you for your attention. Let's talk about dizziness, Western differentiation. From the perspective of Western medicine, there are generally four things that patients mean by dizziness, and they include vertigo, presyncopal lightheadedness, disequilibrium, and other. Vertigo is defined as illusion of movement. Presyncope is a feeling of faintness or lightheadedness. Disequilibrium is a feeling of being unsteady on one's feet, and other symptoms are usually described as a floating type of sensation. Peripheral vertigo. 
The causes of peripheral vertigo include otitis media, acute labyrinthitis, Meniere's disease, vestibular neuronitis, benign par paroxysmal positional vertigo, paralymph fistula, and cervicogenic vertigo. Peripheral causes tend to produce repeated attacks, and these tend to be recognized by the circumstance circumstances that provoke the vertigo. Inner ear problems which affect balance are the most common causes of severe vertigo. Acute labyrinthitis. This occurs during an acute febrile disease such as influenza. The sense of whirling that the patient develops has, has a sudden onset. Nausea and vomiting may occur. The patient has to lie flat and the slightest movement brings on the vertigo. The symptoms gradually subside and disappear in three to six weeks. There's no accompanying tinnitus or hearing loss. Meniere's disease. This is characterized by recurring bouts of sudden vertigo, tinnitus, and deafness. In the intervals between bouts, the patient has complete freedom from, vert from vertigo, but the tinnitus and deafness continue. Central vertigo. The central causes of vertigo include cerebrovascular disease, including transient ischemic attacks, acoustic neuroma, multiple sclerosis, Chiari malformation, and any other conditions directly damaging the caudal brain system or the vestibulocerebellum. Cerebe acoustic neuroma. Acoustic neuroma, also known as vestibular schwannoma, is a benign, usually slow-growing brain tumor that arises from the Schwann cells covering the eighth cranial nerve. Damage to the eighth nerve produces vertigo, nystagmus or involuntary rapid movement of the eyeball, and hearing loss. The red flag in Western medicine, particular attention should be paid to vertigo lasting at least 48 hours. In this case, a cerebrovascular disease must be excluded. Thank you so much for your attention.